Minecraft is a magical world that everyone seems to love that I just can't get into. So when Minecraft Dungeons flaunted its sexy dungeon crawler-like experience with the promise of faster gameplay and even a story, I went from <sighs> to a mild <laughs> But would this just end up being a diluted Diablo clone in a Minecraft skin? Well, for the most part, yeah. Hey, Jay Review. Minecraft Dungeons doesn't seem to shy away from putting gameplay first. Sure, there's a story, but it's so simple, you could easily skip through it without really missing anything. As an overview, you have an illager, you know, those Minecraft inhabitants with the dangly nose that definitely don't remind me of male genitalia, that's been bullied, finds an orb of dominance, and essentially takes over the world. In contrast to this, you're some random adventurer who challenges him and off you go on fighting off hordes of Minecraft enemies across about 10 unique levels. If you were hoping for more of a story, sorry, you just won't find it here. Even on the level select screen, you have to prompt the game to give you a snippet of story if you really want some. They're treating story like the hot salsa packs at Taco Bell. They have it, you want it, but you always have to ask, each and every time. Now in terms of gameplay, you'll find your most basic elements for a dungeon crawler which is adventure through a level, kill everything, find better loot, upgrade yourself, rinse and repeat. It's a simple formula that it just works great. And as this is a Minecraft game and I assume geared to appeal to a wider age demographic, the combat is a lot more simpler than say Diablo and there's also 100% less demonic references. However, don't be fooled, simpler does not mean easier, because holy shit, this game gets hard. I'm going to touch up on difficulty in a moment, but first, let's go over the combat mechanics. For your combat, you'll mostly be rotating between your melee weapon, shooting arrows, dodging, and healing. The equipment interface is very, and I mean very simple. One slot for your melee weapon, which can range from a sword to a glaive and several other types in between. Another slot is for your armor, and the third is for your bow. These three specific equipment slots are unique as you can only enchant these three types of equipment and enchanting your gear is what will make or break your dungeon run. Each gear has three levels of enchantment and as you get higher level and rare gear you can eventually have up to three types of buffs per gear. You follow me? Alright, these buffs can be very powerful from dealing chain lightning damage with your melee weapon to being able to pierce a mob of enemies with your bow or even adding a fire trail ability to your rolls which is a personal favorite. Now as I got later into the game, I realized how critical it was to build a good loadout of these enchantments and not just pick the strongest gear on the list. In the equipment screen, you'll also be able to equip up to three artifacts which will also greatly assist you in battle. These artifacts can heal you or add buffs and abilities to your character and gear. Personally, I relied mostly on artifacts that could help me crowd control with stuns and healing abilities. These artifacts can't be spammed however as they all have their own cooldowns and they consume soul. Soul is basically the essence that's gathered from killing enemies, which creates a really, really good dynamic. The more you kill, the more you can activate your artifacts, which is great. Now these three artifact slots are on top of your potion button. Unlike other dungeon crawlers, you can't buy potions. Instead, you get a magical potion button, which instantly heals you, but has a pretty long cooldown. This is great to get out of a tough spot, and the cooldown ensures you can't rely on it to steamroll mobs. Personally, I prefer this implementation of potions. And now that we have the basics of combat laid out, all that's really left is the feel of dungeon crawling. Each dungeon, aka level, will go on for about 10 to 15 minutes and will feature a ton of Minecraft monsters from creepers, zombies, skeletons, and even the frickin' Andermen. I don't know if you pronounce it like that. But anyway, this thing just came out of nowhere and scared the shit out of me. <laughs> The game will eventually ramp up the difficulty of the enemies as you progress through the game. Later levels will feature priests that can enchant enemies, massive golems that chase you and can kill you in two swings, and even mini bosses sprinkled in with their own epic music to make you sweat just a little. It's a really nice and smooth difficulty curve and potentially one of the best I've ever played through. Whenever I would even start thinking this game is getting easy, the game would level up and slap me back into place. To make it even better, the game features a difficulty slider for each level letting you choose how much of a challenge you want at any given time. 
And after your first playthrough, you'll unlock a new difficulty mode called Adventure, which is a step up from default. The levels and story are the same, but now you'll find new types of enemies in the dungeons as well as new enchanted versions of enemies, which can be absolutely devastating. Completing this mode will then unlock the hardest mode in the game, which I assume dials up the difficulty even more. As the game is fairly new, I didn't get around to unlocking that mode yet, so I can't comment on it personally. But the base default game took me about 7 hours to complete, and I could easily see Adventure Mode being another 7 to 10 hours, with the level and gear grinding required to progress through its higher difficulty. Overall, for 20 bucks, I think it's the right amount of value to game. On top of the grind, there's also a bonus secret section that can be found after the game is complete. I won't spoil anything for you, but this is part of a game that is so cryptic to unlock, it will offer some added fun and a lot more playtime for game completionists. There are some areas I felt the game fell short, however. Throughout the game, you will return to your base camp after each level, which is where you'll eventually unlock different merchants to buy things with the gems you find through the dungeons. This town has so much potential for being a home that you can upgrade and customize as you grow, but instead it acts as a very hollow hub. Between missions, you'll basically just buy weapons and artifacts, tweak your loadout, search for gems, and jump back into the next level. It just feels like it could have been so much more and that there'd be more fun, clever ways to spend your gems than on two random generator merchants. Like, what's the point of having a house there if you can't add anything to your house? You can just walk around it. I also felt that the game didn't reward exploration enough. The level maps are huge, and while there's always a little compass guiding you to your next objective, players can choose to explore the map to look for mobs and loot. The majority of the time I felt these side paths ultimately led to nothing. It would have been nice having more surprise mobs and mini challenges to unlock even more cool loot. These elements are there, but they're just so few and far between. Otherwise, the game excels in crafting a fun, family-friendly dungeon crawler experience with all of the gameplay basics one needs with a very nice and long difficulty curve. The game also plays to its Minecraft roots and offers an absolutely beautiful soundtrack. The campsite offers a serene theme reminiscent of wandering the Minecraft overworld, while dungeons have dark and creepy music. Many times I just stop playing, honestly just to appreciate the music. Lastly, while I mostly play this on my own, the game can be played with up to four players either in couch co-op or online. This would be a game I'd absolutely enjoy playing with some friends. I'll also add that since the gameplay is so well geared to pick up and play in small bursts of time, I would recommend playing this on the Nintendo Switch assuming no performance drawbacks. For the sake of this review, Microsoft provided me with a PC code, so I played on PC with max settings. And for those who want more, Microsoft has already announced two more DLC packs coming which can be picked up for an additional 10 bucks with the base game. Details are pretty limited on what those DLC packs will include, but I do hope to see more levels, enemies, and maybe even some fun elements to collect for your home base. Overall, Minecraft Dungeons was not a game I was excited for. In fact, I didn't even realize it was coming out this month. However, it was a really nice surprise to discover this little gem of a game. Between its platform accessibility, pick up and go gameplay, sweet spot price point, and the very popular Minecraft theme, I think Microsoft really cooked up something special that will be played by many for years to come. When it comes to my personal recommendation, I say play it. And if you're into dungeon crawlers, let me know which dungeon crawler you'd recommend I try out next. And until next time, keep it classy.